Hello. Hello. <laughs> it's us again. <laughs> this week's video, we're going to look at med mooring, and it's a uh, something that seems to terrify the life out of a lot of people. Well, it did us, to be honest, to start with. So. Yeah, we'd we'd yeah. had we'd had a, a practice, but we, until we got to Gibraltar, we'd never actually done a med mooring with a slime line um, at the front. So uh, that's what this week's video is about. We will show you a how we do it. And that might not be the right way for you, but it's the way we do it, and it works for us. We'll show you why um, different boats move in different ways, and how you've got to be aware of those. And um, yeah, we'll show you on video. Take a look, and we'll see you at the end. This week, we're going to look at med mooring, and why some boats are better at manoeuvring in marinas than others, we're going to look at different hull shapes and how they steer forwards and backwards and we're going to show you step by step how we do our med mooring. Enjoy the video. All hull shapes steer particularly well in close quarters or in a marina. Long keels, for instance, tend to want to go in one direction, forwards. They don't like going in reverse, and they like going in a straight line, that's it, apart from the prop wash, that is. A more modern and faster shape hull, like a fin keel, will steer much better in a marina, and they tend to pivot around the centre line of their keel, but they steer much better going backwards, because in reverse the rudder tends to stop them being blown off course, particularly in strong crosswinds. Modern yachts with twin rudders are almost unsteerable in marinas or in close quarters, unless they're actually moving forward or backwards, i.e. they have water going over the rudders, and many of these when set up as a cruiser need to have a bow thruster and a stern thruster to make them manageable, but as with all boats, this is a design compromise. All rudders work best when there's water flowing over the surfaces, i.e. they're travelling in the direction of the red arrow, and the blue arrow is the water going over the surface. And the same is true in reverse. Changing the rudder angle causes the water to flow over it, and come off the trailing edge in a different direction. If your propeller is in front of your rudder, then you can vector the thrust from the propeller across the rudder even if the boat is not moving forward. On a long keel boat, or a boat with a large wetted area of hull, the reaction from changing the vector of this thrust may be different from a boat with a thin keel. The thin keel boat will react faster with the stern tending to be pushed in one direction, as the boat moves forward. On twin rudder boats, where the propeller is in the centre line of the boat, you will not have any thrust that you can vector over the rudders, and therefore it will only steer when it's going forward, i.e. water is travelling over the rudders. And the same is true when twin rudder boats are going in reverse. The important thing to remember is no matter what type of rudder you have, your boat will only steer when water is flowing over that rudder, either from the prop or from the boat moving, either forward or in reverse. There's also something called prop wash or prop walk. This makes the back of your boat go either to port or starboard, depending which direction you're going in. The shape of your hull, rudder and keel can have a big effect on prop walk or prop wash. When manoeuvring a boat, this prop walk or prop wash can be used to your advantage. We'll go into prop walk or prop wash in a later video. However, when you're going into a marina berth or tying stern too, it's a good idea to know which way your prop wash or prop walk is going to try and take the stern of your boat, either in forward 
or astern. We've done all our engine checks. We've started the engine. We have actually loosened the aft lines a little bit. Um, there's two ways you can approach leaving the dock or coming into the dock. Um, one works and the other doesn't. So the first thing is to brief your crew on what you're going to do. So you can do the, you know, the mad Tasmanian. Doesn't work, does it? Yeah. Um, you can do that or you can do the Mr. Bean style. You can explain what you're going to do and then ask if, um, if we've got any questions. What we're going to do, Cindy, we're just going to loosen the aft lines, which will let the boat come forward just a little bit and take the strain off of the bow line, the slime line. The slime line, the end of it is back to the cleat on the pontoon, so it can't come undone, we can't lose it. Once we've got enough forward, and I guess it's going to be about a metre or so, if you can undo the forward line, drop it into the water and tell me when it's sunk, because I want to use the bow thruster to take this out, and I don't want it to go through the bow thruster. So, just to recap, forward slightly about a metre, release the front line, drop it in the water, tell me when it's sunk, I'll hold the boat in the right position and then we'll undo the aft lines, throw them ashore and away we go. Bob's your uncle and Fanny's your aunt. Any questions? No. Oh yeah, we've had the generator out. I loosen the aft lines, go forward about a metre. Okay, hold it there. So we've come forward about a metre, just over a metre. Cindy's now going forward to the slime line, which is attached to the front of the boat. You'll note that the boat is actually drifting off this way gently with the wind. It's okay, that's what uh, fenders are for. I think the Americans call them bumpers, which is kind of... Doing. I'm just going to put a little bit of forward on just to keep us in position. Boat roughly in line. And if it's been a while since you've been out, you'll notice that the boat is steering different. This is Finn. Say hello, Finn. Finn's staying with us for a couple of months uh, while his owners go back to the States and uh, being dog lovers we volunteered he's got his life jacket on 
she's just putting the fenders in haven't been out for two weeks we're gonna go out just have a little sail and uh, run the water maker for a couple of hours Oh, well, we're out and clear of the marina now. That's the uh, marina back there. See if you can see it. And it's the 27th. Is it 27th of January? 26th of January, I stand corrected. And this is um, the Mediterranean. So you can you can sail the med in the winter. You just got to pick your days, and you got to be in the right part of the med, of course, as well. Uh, further west and further north, they've got some uh, pretty foul weather. But here in the east, it's uh, absolutely flat calm. Gorgeous day, and we're going to go out, give the bo the boat a run, hopefully. Uh, clean some of the weed off the bottom that's accumulated because uh, although we're copper coat um, it, it only works when water's flowing across it as we've often said or to uh, or to unfurl our ensign really Oh, it's just time for a cup of tea. A lovely, lovely spring morning. It is a bit on the chilly side. <laughs> well, yeah, it is. well, chilly for us. Chilly for us, yeah. It's uh, about 15, 17 degrees Celsius. But it is good to get out of the marina. Yeah. Kind of getting a bit of a rut just sitting, well, not just sitting there. There's a quite a dirty haze over the town in that direction, look. One of the good things about wintering this far southeast in the Mediterranean is there's nobody about. Well, own the only um, vessel that's out here sailing at the moment we're just running our water maker um, so that we've got one tank which is RO and one tank which is uh, tap water the only thing is that the radio is quite alive because I don't know if you can see on the horizon here Let's try and zoom in there are probably 25 or 30 big boats ships anchored wait waiting to go into mercy
So the forward mooring lines, we call them slime lines, basically because they lay on the bottom of the marina and get covered in slime. But they go forward. Sometimes there's two, sometimes they're one. These lines are secured to chains, and then the chains are secured to a series of concrete blocks on the base of the marina. Sometimes the blocks are substituted for large anchors. The important thing to remember is that all the adjacent boats to your berth will have slime lines and these will be running out towards the centre of the fairway. So you'll have to avoid those as you come in. Or of course, go out. At the stern of the boat, it will be secured to the pontoon and these pontoons are usually concrete. Very few float in the uh, Mediterranean. If you're just popping out for a few hours or a couple of days, you leave your lines on the dock. Otherwise, you carry them with you on your boat. The important thing is to adjust your speed and rate so that you miss everybody else's slime lines and you get this ideal track out of the marina. Or indeed, ideal track back into the marina if you're reversing in. Now, you don't have to reverse in, but most people find it's more convenient for getting on or off the boat. So let's have a look at the dock side and see how these lines are set out in real life. See here how the slime lines work. This line goes down to a chain. Uh, we've got a new piece of line on that. We've got a double set of lines to our mid cleats on both sides. And then our stern lines come back to these big D-rings set in the concrete and we've got springs on there so here's another small boat you see he's got his lines are doubled up he hasn't got mid cleats so he hasn't got mid cleat line and then his line goes forward slime line and actually much the same as our slime lines when you come in, this is the line that they will pass you, this small one, that goes down under the boat and out to the big slime line and you literally pull that. See if we can get the other side of it and show you. There we go, so that's his slime line look. This one here goes out. line when they come in this gets handed to you you pull it along the side of the boat that then lifts the main line and you then tie that on the front so your boat is continuously being pulled forward away from the dock and because it's very little tides in the Mediterranean we don't need to have floating docks so this this one's concrete our neighbours have just gone out here for a little sail, the wind is up. Now of course we've demonstrated how we come in to the dock and our lines are already on the dock with our springs on for the winter. However, you can also med more using lines straight from your boat, which would be called up and prepared before you come in, and at the front of the boat you drop an anchor. And if you'd like to see a demonstration of how we do that, then tell us in the comments and we'll go out, drop the anchor and show you exactly how we come back on the anchor. And the anchor secures the bow of the boat. 
and I'm all tangled up here somehow. Well, there we go. That's that's the way we do it, and uh, I it, hope it helps you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean it works for us. The the, the um, different people have different methods. I think uh, a and few practice makes perfect. Yeah, yeah, practice. Yeah, practice, practice, practice. You know, don't be afraid to go out in your boat in the marina and practice, and let the marineros know that that's what you're going to do, and pick a time when they're not busy. But uh, mm. yeah, certainly practice and and no shouts. You know, the the Tasmanian devil <laughs> bit that we did. They just you know, well, we see so many people uh, fall out over mooring and the. Generally, the man hasn't um, hasn't briefed the crew or the wife or whoever's aboard on what they're going to do, and then he goes completely bonkers like a Tasmanian devil, you know. <laughs> and uh, you know, we yeah. you, you do sit there laughing, but it, it, you know, it and happens. We, we have found in many places, not everywhere, that the marineros. Do try to rush you. Come yeah. back, Captain, Captain, come back. Yeah. Faster, faster. Uh, a a lot of the marineros have yeah. never been on board a boat and they'll tell you how you should be doing it. <laughs> At the end of the day, uh, you know, the nut behind the wheel is the one in charge. And that's you, Captain. <laughs> if you're behind that wheel, you're in charge. It's your boat. You decide how fast you're going to move. And if you make a cock up, you make a cock up. You know, everyone makes cock-ups you know that's why there's rubbers on the ends of pencils you know to wipe out your mistakes <laughs> so don't be afraid we've all done it me and cindy made a complete pig's ear of, of getting in and the thing is just look go out get settled correct the mistakes think about what you're doing particularly watch boats and um you know currents not so much uh currents and tides here in the med but uh well it, even the wind makes a big effect it does have yeah. a bigger difference we yeah. our boat goes particularly well in reverse into <laughs> the wind it steers you know perfect yeah perfectly but we you know try it get out there try it you're gonna make a mistake it's gonna happen don't worry about it get up dust yourself off have another go that <laughs> that's it isn't it Big thank you to our Patreons, as always. Yeah, brilliant uh, Patreons. We've just had a delivery from England. That, Ooh, we'll that, show you that next time. That <laughs> Patreons know about, and it's turned up. So, uh, yeah, we'll, uh, there'll be a, an extra Patreon video this week, hopefully. Um, oh, well, Michael, if your name's Michael and you're from the States, you know why we're thanking you. Michael, thank you very brilliant. much. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, that was about it, madam, wasn't it? For the, oh, shop. Oh, yeah. The I shop. Say, don't forget to remind you about the shop. The shop. We get a lot of people comment on videos or personal messages on Facebook, and they say, where can we... The, the thing that you covered in the last video, you know, the um, f flange wobbling spring or the, you know, <laughs> whatever it was... Um, let's take a for instance the 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 remote control for the for the anchor windlass um where we we saved people i don't know 250 well, we saved ourselves that much as well well 250 dollars yeah. roughly pounds euros they're all about the same at the moment but the people are going well we where do we get this well now you get it on our website so if you go to www sv in Pavidus, and then you click on the shop page i think our dog's escaping i think <laughs> i think the dog's escaping um then you can um buy the the stuff that we've recommended over all our other videos stuff that we've tested tried out it's not on that web page unless we've given it a thoroughly good seeing to who uh, misses okay we don't advertise rubbish you know us we say it how it is if it's rubbish then um it's rubbish <laughs> and if it's good and it's on our website you click on the link it will take you to an amazon page and then you can either go to your local amazon you know amazon greece or france or italy or spain or you uh, united states or uk and it will then 
um, take you straight to that page if that if those goods are available mm. and you will pay the price that you see you won't pay any extra you won't pay any more we get a little percentage from the seller of those items um, as a thank you for, for telling you about them <laughs> so um, that's our, our shop page www.svimpavidus dot com dot com yeah sorry dot com yeah dot com <laughs> look there oh, look it's there that's the address along there there you go right thanks for watching guys thank you we're off we're off aren't we we're, we're off we're off out we're off out now for dinner we're being treated to dinner by someone isn't that nice see you later guys <laughs> bye sail safe bye <laughs>